Welcome back. In this unit, I'm going to introduce a new tool called Bootstrap. And I'm on the Bootstrap homepage, getbootstrap.com. And I just want to take a few minutes in this intro video to explain what Bootstrap is and why we're using it. And then also to show you a few examples of sites that use Bootstrap. So let's begin just by reading the official Bootstrap blurb. Bootstrap is the most popular HTML, CSS, and JavaScript framework for developing responsive mobile-first projects on the web. Let's break that down a little bit. Bootstrap is extremely popular. In fact, it's the most starred and forked repository on GitHub, which basically means that it has the most people using it, the most people favoriting it on GitHub. And all that Bootstrap is, is actually a single file of CSS and a single file of JavaScript. Now there's a lot of CSS and a lot of JavaScript in those files, but they're just two files and we can include them in our own application. Basically, we take someone else's code from Bootstrap, we add it into our own application, and it helps us make good looking sites that are responsive and it helps us make them fast without having to write a ton of our own code. There are two main reasons that I'm showing it to you in this course. The first is that it's very popular, lots of places use it, lots of companies, lots of developers use it, and it's just worth knowing. But the second is that it's gonna help us make good looking websites pretty quickly in this course. So when we're learning backend stuff, when we're focusing on Node and Express and Mongo and Mongoose, and we're knee deep in all of this complex backend logic, we can still make something that looks good without having to devote an hour or two hour video to styling something. We can plug Bootstrap in and we can get things going in 10, 15 minutes and it will look pretty good. The next thing I'll do is give you a quick tour of the docs. Bootstrap has famously good documentation, lots of good examples, and they actually use Bootstrap on this website, which makes sense. So let's start by clicking on CSS. And as I mentioned, Bootstrap is just a single CSS file, a single JavaScript file. Inside that CSS file, there's a bunch of stuff that we get for free. So let's take a look at buttons. So if we wanna make a button and we have Bootstrap included in our application, we can add this class, two classes actually, BTN and BTN default, and we get these buttons. We can do different colors, Let's take a look at forms. We get nice inputs here. And it's also really important to note everything is responsive on this site. So you can see we get things that respond to the width of the screen. We also have different types of forms. You can combine the different pieces. So here they're using a button with a form. So it's like Lego pieces. Bootstrap in a lot of ways is just a bin of Lego pieces that you can put together and add to your site as you see fit. We'll be going over most of these components, most of these big pieces, uh, once we start working with it and writing Bootstrap code ourselves. So for now, we'll move on. I'm gonna show you the next tab, which is components. Components contain some of the bigger pieces of Bootstrap that we can use, and that includes things like nav bars. And this is probably one of the most popular aspects of Bootstrap that lots and lots of sites use. As you can see, with a little bit of code, and it does look like a lot, but I assure you it's a lot less than it would be if we were writing a nav bar from scratch. And this comes with drop downs, a form, and there are multiple types of nav bars, different colors, some that are fixed to the top of the page, some that will scroll. There's other components like the jumbotron, which is a way of showcasing some content on your website, progress bars, and these all come with Bootstrap. So you might be wondering right now, if Bootstrap comes with all these pieces and they're already pre-styled, wouldn't every site that uses Bootstrap look the same? And the answer is yes and no. It depends on how the site uses Bootstrap. I would argue that a company or a project that uses Bootstrap well makes it hard to tell that they're actually using Bootstrap because they use those main components and then you can go in and write your own styles on top. Change the colors, change the fonts, change some of the hover effects. You don't have to use the exact same colors and everything that come with Bootstrap. But that doesn't mean that there's anything inherently bad in using the built-in bootstrap styles either. And we'll definitely be doing both. So when we're making a site and the focus is not really on the front end and we just wanna make something that looks presentable quickly, basically prototype a front end, we'll use bootstrap and we won't really modify many pieces. But then if we're working on something a little larger, something that we don't wanna look like we use bootstrap without changing anything at all, then we'll go in and add some of our own styles, basically add a coat of spray paint on top of bootstrap. The next thing I want to do is show you some of the sites that are built with Bootstrap. And Bootstrap actually has an official website where they showcase some of those sites. If you click on Expo, I have it open already, you can see that they showcase beautiful and inspiring uses of Bootstrap. So we can open some of these. 
just open them in new tabs. And these are just the most recent ones. There's hundreds on this site. As you can see, tons and tons of them. And we can keep scrolling and scrolling, and then we can go to view older. And there are so many different sites that are using it, and they don't really all look the same. Yes, maybe a lot of them have a nav bar. Maybe a lot of them have this full screen, large image layout, but that's more of a design trend than something that Bootstrap is purely responsible for. So let's take a look at some of these. This one is Creative Tim, which is a company that makes website templates actually. And you can see we have this nice grid of images. It's very responsive. If I shrink this down, we get our little nav bar here. So this is a bootstrap component. The way that everything is laid out in this grid, bootstrap is partially responsible for that. But you can also see that they're not using the default built-in bootstrap buttons. They've changed them. Things look different. So I think this is a really nice use of bootstrap. It's a really nice looking site. It works well and it uses bootstrap, but it doesn't rely on bootstrap 100%. Let's take a look at one or two more. So this one is called Indicus or Indicius, something like that. Apparently they design and build digital products that people enjoy using. So let's scroll down here, take a look at what we have. So you have some content that's probably built with a bootstrap grid system, which helps organize and lay things out. Layout, as I've mentioned before, is notoriously difficult in pure CSS. It's getting better, but Bootstrap is really, really useful to help us lay things out on our application. Then we have this little footer bar. There's a nav bar up here. So it's really fun to go to Bootstrap Expo, take some time to explore some of the projects that use Bootstrap and see how they use it and all the different ways that companies are modifying it, adding in their own fonts, their own colors, and really figure out what are the core components that lots and lots of sites are using and why do sites use Bootstrap. And in my opinion, it really comes down to the grid system, which we'll be devoting a video in this unit to, and the nav bars, and the responsiveness of everything. Okay, so to wrap up, I'm going to show you a simple site that we'll be making. This is our startup called Heavy Petting. <laughs> it helps you find your perfect feline soulmate. And it uses Bootstrap. You can see we have a nav bar up here. Just like that, we have sign up, login buttons, we get these little icons. Then we have our text here and a little tagline and then our button. And then as I resize things, everything is responsive. You can see things are moving around, shifting around. But most importantly, we get that little hamburger and we have a mobile friendly nav bar. So at the end of this unit, we'll be working on creating this fake startup landing page that matches people and pets in romantic relationships.